HS2 was meant to be the UK's answer to high-speed rail and revolutionised travel. But is it now a mega-project disaster? In this video, we'll dive deep into the HS2 saga, the challenges it faced and the uncertain future it faces. So, what happened to HS2? Let's find out. What exactly is HS2? It stands for High Speed 2 and it's Britain's biggest infrastructure project in over a century, a brand new high-speed rail network designed to link up major cities across England. It's been sparking debate since it was first proposed back in 2009. The idea? To transform how we travel. No more packed trains, no more hours stuck in traffic. HS2 promised faster journeys, more space on the existing network and a much-needed economic boost to the north. Imagine zipping from London to Birmingham in just 49 minutes. That's over 30 minutes faster than the current fastest journey. Or travelling from London to Manchester in a mere 1 hour and 8 minutes, shaving over an hour off the current 2 hours and 8 minute trip. HS2 aimed to make these speedy journeys a reality, with state-of-the-art trains reaching speeds of up to 230 miles per hour. But HS2 isn't just about laying down new tracks. It's a massive undertaking, involving the construction of brand new stations, bridges, tunnels and viaducts. Think of the iconic stations planned for London Euston and Birmingham Curzon Street, or the impressive engineering feats like the 3.4km long Colne Valley Viaduct. It's a project that would reshape the landscape of England. HS2's original plan consisted of three phases. Phase 1 from London to Birmingham, Phase 2A extending from Birmingham to Crewe, and Phase 2B with two legs connecting to Manchester and Leeds. HS2 also promised to free up space on existing lines, allowing for 144 extra freight trains per day. And it was about the economy, with estimates suggesting it could generate a whopping £14 billion annually for the UK. Plus, it was touted as a greener way to travel with up to 90% less carbon emissions per passenger compared to flying. The initial price tag? A hefty £32.7 billion. Construction was supposed to be completed by 2026, but as we'll soon discover, the reality of HS2 has turned out to be vastly different from that initial vision, proposed all the way back in 2009. Today, the reality of HS2 looks drastically different. What was once a grand vision for a high-speed rail network connecting major cities has now become a project plagued by delays, massive cost overruns, political controversy and, ultimately, significant scaling back. At the heart of the HS2 controversy lies its ballooning cost. The initial budget was £32 billion. By 2013, it had risen to just over £50 billion. In 2019, it had ballooned to £100 billion. And in 2023, some estimations placed the final price tag at a staggering £180 billion. These escalating costs have raised serious questions about the project's overall economic viability. What went wrong? How did they go from £32 billion to £180 billion? There is no short answer for that. Unrealistic expectations The project's initial cost estimates were overly optimistic, failing to account for the complexities of such a large-scale infrastructure undertaking. This set the stage for a series of cost overruns and delays that have dogged the project ever since. Ignoring red warnings Early on, there were warnings that the project was spiralling out of control. The government's Infrastructure and Projects Authority raised concerns multiple times, assigning a red rating to the first two phases. These warnings indicated that the project was unachievable in its current form and that significant issues needed to be addressed. In February 2020, despite the project being tens of billions of pounds over budget and several years behind schedule, Prime Minister Boris Johnson approved the continuation of HS2. Along with his approval, the project was assigned a revised budget and timeline. Two months later, government ministers granted permission for the railway to enter its construction phase. This approval allowed HS2 Limited, the government-owned company overseeing the project, to formally issue notices to contractors responsible for designing and constructing key infrastructure, including bridges, tunnels and viaducts, for Phase 1 between London and Birmingham. Planning and execution issues 
Delays in planning and execution have further compounded the project's woes. The need to adjust timelines to meet spending limits has resulted in additional costs, creating a vicious cycle of delays and overruns. Ineffective cost control. The use of cost plus contracts has made it difficult to maintain budgetary discipline. These contracts often lead to higher expenditures because they do not incentivize contractors to minimize costs. Prioritizing speed over capacity. Some experts believe that the project's emphasis on speed rather than capacity led to unnecessary expensive engineering solutions. Building a network for trains that travel at 230 miles per hour means constructing incredibly straight tracks, which require tunnels and viaducts to cut through the landscape, particularly in the Chilterns, an area of outstanding natural beauty. This focus on speed increased the project's complexity and cost. While it might shave minutes off a journey from London to Birmingham, was that extra speed worth the billion spent? Reflecting on the situation, Philip Hammond stated, I believe we incurred significantly higher costs in the project than many may have realized at the time. Political motivations and short-term vision. And like many big ideas, it got caught up in the world of politics, a world where promises and personal gains sometimes take center stage over long-term goals. Since its inception, HS2 has seen support from multiple governments, each with its own agenda. Imagine trying to plan something for the next 50 years when leaders are only thinking about the next election. That's the challenge HS2 faced. David Cameron backed the project to promote his Northern Powerhouse initiative. Boris Johnson, on the other hand, saw HS2 as a tool for his levelling up agenda, promising to boost the North's economy post-Brexit. However, these political motivations often led to short-term thinking and decisions that did not align with the project's long-term needs lack of transparency and accountability. HS2 Limited, the company responsible for delivering the project, has faced criticism for its lack of transparency. From mismanagement of budgets to allegations of providing misleading information to the government, the project has suffered from a significant breakdown in trust. Andrew Bruce, a former employee of HS2 Limited, claimed that he was given two sets of figures, one to show the government and one that reflected reality. This discrepancy raises questions about the honesty and accountability within the organization. External factors such as Brexit and the pandemic further compounded HS2's challenges. Brexit created significant disruptions in supply chains, making it more difficult and expensive to source materials and labor from Europe. This increased both the time and cost required to complete various parts of the project. The pandemic added another layer of complexity. Construction work slowed down and public health restrictions meant that fewer workers could be on site, leading to delays. Also, it led to an increase in material costs, further inflating the project's already bloated budget. HS2 has also faced significant opposition from environmental groups and local communities along its route. Critics argue that the railway is causing irreparable environmental damage. Large sections of the countryside particularly in areas like the Chilterns, have been cleared to make way for the line. The combination of these factors has created significant challenges for HS2, turning it from a symbol of progress into a mega-project disaster. The ballooning costs, along with growing public scrutiny, led Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to decide in October 2023 to cancel phases 2A and 2B. This scaling back has sparked disappointment, particularly in the North, where many feel let down by the government's change in plans. The dream of a truly national high-speed rail network connecting all parts of the country now seems further away than ever. But what does the future hold for this once ambitious high-speed rail network? The current focus is firmly on completing phase one, the line connecting London to Birmingham. This section remains under active construction with thousands of workers and a staggering £22.5 billion already invested. Despite the setbacks, HS2 Limited remains committed to delivering this crucial first phase, aiming to open the line for passenger service between 2029 and 2033. However, the final price tag for phase one is still uncertain 
with estimates ranging from £49 billion to a daunting £57 billion. But what about the rest of the UK? The cancellation of the northern and eastern extensions has left many cities and regions feeling left out of the high-speed rail revolution. While some alternative plans and upgrades to existing lines have been proposed, the loss of the full HS2 network is undeniably a disappointment for those who had hoped for improved connectivity and economic benefits. So what's the path forward for HS2? The project's future is now inextricably linked to Phase 1's success. If they can keep up with the new deadlines and budget, it may pave the way for future expansions or a renewed focus on improving regional rail connections. However, if Phase 1 continues to face delays and cost overruns, it could further erode public confidence and cast a long shadow over the future of high-speed rail in the UK. HS2 has changed a lot. Can it still deliver, even in its smaller form? And the big question, would you consider this mega-project a disaster? Share your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more deep dives into the biggest stories of our time. See you in the next video.